Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or a welcome if you are new. Today I've got another what's for dinner video for you with some easy but delicious recipes to share with you. A couple of them I believe were new recipes to me, so I know at least a couple of them are new to the to my channel. So anyways, let's get into the recipes. So for this first dinner, we're gonna make a really easy chicken noodle soup recipe. And we're going to start off by heating up some extra virgin olive oil in my pot. I sauteed a half of an onion that I chopped up just to start to get those tender. I like onions only if they're like really cooked. So I did that and then I added in about three or four chopped up carrots, sauteed them for a few minutes just to begin getting them softened. They'll continue to cook as we go on. And then I add in a couple scoops of garlic, however much you want, and saute that for just a few seconds. And then we're going to season with some salt and some oregano. We're gonna add in some basil in a little bit, but at this point I wasn't sure if I was gonna use it, so we just went with oregano and salt. And then we're going to go ahead and add in our chicken broth. I am using a full carton, a full, is it 32 ounces, I think, but it's four cups. Four cups of chicken broth, and we're just going to add that into the soup. Now we're also going to add in about two cups of water and then I decided to add in the basil, so we're gonna add a little bit of that in here. And then we're just going to add in, is that all I'm doing? I think that's it. No, yes, we're gonna put the lid on and let that warm up for a little bit. Now for the chicken, you can easily use rotisserie chicken or leftover chicken. All I did was cook up a couple of chicken breasts in the oven. I did not season them at all prior, so now I took them out, cut them into chunks, and I'm seasoning it with some salt, garlic powder, and onion powder. And I'm just mixing it together on this cutting board because I didn't want to dirty up another dish. So that's why I'm doing that. And then we're going to add our chicken into our soup. And I'm just kind of using my cutting board to like block up the liquid so it doesn't splatter and get me. So that's why it might look like I'm doing that a little bit funky. But it worked. So, you know, do what works. You want to have about two or three cups of chicken. So however you want to get the chicken is fine, but that's about the amount of chicken you want. And we're gonna add in one can of drained corn, and then about two to probably two and a half is what I ended up doing, uh, cups of egg noodles, and we're just going to let that simmer until our noodles are fully cooked. And that's all I'm doing for this chicken noodle soup. Guys, you can totally uh, mess around with the ratios on everything based on what you and your family like. Super easy. Came out wonderful and perfect for those chilly days. All right guys, so for tonight's dinner, I already did it, I didn't film it, but I'm gonna tell you what I did. And there's kind of a lot of dripping happening. I think something's dripping in my sink. My sink's not dripping. A dish full of water in my sink is dripping. Anyways, you might not even be able to hear it. We're gonna have steak bites for dinner. I will link the recipe below. I don't know that I'm following it exactly, but I've got some stew meat, which I pref would have preferred to have been able to trim already but it's not fully thawed, so I'll have to do that later. But I'm throwing this in the slow cooker. I greased my slow cooker. I sprinkled with salt. I put on about two teaspoons of minced garlic. I put some dried minced onion because I didn't feel like chopping up an onion. A few dashes of Worcestershire sauce, four tablespoons of butter, and about a cup of beef, of beef broth. And I'm going to put this on, well, I'm going to do mine on high because it's already four or no, three o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm gonna put this on high and I'll have to make some sides up later. But for now, this is done and I can go do some errands. All right, so it's a few hours later and we got dinner just about ready. So we're gonna make some mashed potatoes because I thought that would be really good with this. It's kind of going for something hearty and warm and cozy for dinner, so. We're gonna peel and dice our potatoes. I'm not gonna show you everything with my mashed potatoes, but I do t usually peel and dice them, and the smaller you do them, the quicker they're going to cook, and we're just going to cover them with water and bring them to a boil until they are fork tender. So going back over to my slow cooker, I have the meat out that I needed to trim off, like the fat, and into smaller pieces, and I kind of skimmed anything out of the here, like any fat that was floating around, like not like, like little chunks of fat or anything I didn't want. I skimmed that out. And we're just gonna make our gravy right in here. So I'm just sprinkling in some flour, whisking that, adding in some salt, and then we're going to add a little bit more flour, I believe, and just go until the gravy 
is the thickness that you like. Um, you just don't want to go too fast because you don't want to get too thick and then it's kind of goopy. So that is the word of caution if you are not used to doing this. Now that I've got my meat all cut back up, we're just going to put that back into the slow cooker to hang out with the gravy for a little bit, warm back up while we finish our mashed potatoes. So I'm just gonna show you how I do mine. I've shown you before. I don't do it the same every time. I don't make my mashed potatoes like whipped and super, like without any chunks. I just mash it up with this little masher and we're adding in about a tablespoon of butter, a couple tablespoons. Well, actually I think that looks like one ounce of cream cheese. Maybe it's two, I think it's only one. But if I have it on hand, I'll do butter, cream cheese, sour cream, not usually all three, but usually a combination of butter and then either cream cheese or sour cream based on what I have. Oh, I forgot I needed to get green beans on the stove, so I got those on the stove. Then once it's pretty well mixed, I like to add in a little bit of milk. I try not to do that in the very, very beginning. Um, I'm using almond milk just because that's what we have, but we're just going to add in a little bit of milk and stir that all together. And here it is all plated up and this was delicious and I think I'm going to be doing this again because I've got more stew meat in my freezer. So now for this next night's dinner we're going to start by making up some rice and I'm just using some brown rice. I'm using one cup and then two cups of liquid. I'm going to use some beef broth because I yeah wanted to. You could just use water but I'm using beef broth because we're going to be making a beef dish. So moving on, we are going to be making some beef and broccoli. So I've got some avocado oil and I'm just going to saute up a bag of frozen broccoli. You can use fresh as well. And we're just going to cook that for a few minutes and let that tender get nice and tender. And while that's going, we're going to make up our sauce for the beef and broccoli. So I have a half a cup of beef broth. A quarter cup of low sodium sauce is what the recipe calls for, but I like to use my coconut aminos. One tablespoon of toasted sesame oil, one teaspoon of brown sugar. The recipe calls for a teaspoon of cornstarch. I don't have cornstarch, so I'm going to use flour. And I think the general idea is that you use twice as much flour as cornstarch. So I don't know. I might be wrong. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a professional chef, but I do like to share recipes. And then we're going to add in some dried onion powder. I don't know why I said dried. I guess that's because what the recipe said, but. I guess onion powder is generally dried. Onion powder and about half a teaspoon of garlic powder or more to taste. Quarter teaspoon of ground ginger or more to taste. I'm reading the recipe. I'll have it linked for you. And then we're going to add in some fresh garlic, about a scoopful. And we're going to mix that all together. And that's going to be our sauce. And we will add that in when we get to that part of the recipe. So once our broccoli is nice and tender, we're going to remove that from a from the pan, put it in a bowl, off to the side, and we will come back to it later. So now I'm adding a little bit more oil to the pan. I don't know if I'm using avocado oil or olive oil, but it doesn't really matter. Anyways, I guess this is the first, uh, yes, I had some more stew meat. I guess I didn't show you that earlier. Uh, I had some stew meat, but you can use whatever cut you would like, really. Um... And I cut it up into small pieces and just put it in that marinade. I didn't really marinate it for long. I just kind of cut it up and let it sit in there while I was cooking the broccoli. And then we cooked that until both sides, or till it was all the way cooked, just cooked for a little bit and then flipped it over till it was all done. And the recipe calls for beef round cut. I'm sorry, calls for beef round cut into strips. But you can use any tender cut that you want. So once the beef was fully cooked, we added it, the broccoli back in, and I was not happy with the thickness, so I'm adding in a little bit more flour just to thicken up the sauce a little bit. So this is my first time making a beef and broccoli, and although I had to make some adaptions, I really liked it and would definitely do it again, and we served that over top of the rice. For tonight's dinner, we're going to be making taco soup, and here is everything we need plus a pound of ground beef, which I'm gonna cook up here soon. And I'm also gonna add in about half of an onion, I think, uh, when I do the beef. Um, and then the rest will be in the slow cooker, but we have some beef broth. This is twice as much as you the recipe calls for the uh, diced tomatoes, but this is all I have. And it'll just add more liquid, which is not a problem, and more tomatoes, so that doesn't bother me. Um, black beans, and then the recipe calls for kidney beans. I didn't have any, so I'm gonna use pinto beans. We're gonna do drain and rinse these. We're going to use the juice from this 
and the Rotel. I'm gonna put my corn on the side, I'm not gonna put it in the slow cooker because uh, we're, we have someone coming over for dinner tonight who can't have corn, so I'm just gonna leave this out and this will just go in for those who want it. And then some taco seasoning, I make my own taco seasoning and a ranch um, seasoning, but you're gonna need both of those, along with some onion powder and some salt. So uh, let's get started. So I diced up about half of an onion and I'm just gonna cook that while I brown up one pound of ground beef. And while that is happening, I am going to go ahead and drain and rinse my beans. All right, so I have my one pound of ground beef with the onion. Pardon my camera angles, guys having tripod issues, we're working through it. I've got my uh, two cans of beans that have been drained and rinsed. I'm gonna add in one can of the Rotel, all the juices. Remember my diced tomatoes can is like twice the size that you need to have. I will have the um, recipe of course linked down below for you. We're gonna add in about two cups of broth. I think the recipe said like a can, which I don't have a can. But the ounces, I think we're like 14 and a half or something. I don't know. We're going to go through that. My can seems, or my curtain seems to be leaking. Wonderful. Like I said, we are going to hold off on the uh, corn and just do that on an individual basis. But normally I would just put it right in here. We're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of onion powder. And then because I make my own uh, ranch and taco seasoning, we're gonna do about three tablespoons of each. That's about um, one packet. So if you buy the packets, or if you buy the um, if you buy the larger things, is what I was gonna say, like in bulk. That's how much you'll want. Hang on, gotta shake that up a little bit. I'm doing this kind of kind of messy. Try and hurry up and get this going. Now you can do this on low for four hours or high for three. I'm gonna do a combination of both just um, cause we're probably gonna need it in like three and a half hours. So I'm gonna start on low and bump it up to high. Later, just gonna stir in all of these seasonings. I did spray my crock pot first. I don't know if you need to, I always do. I don't use those liners. I know that's another option. Can't quite see this or my face you're looking at my arm. And then you can pull out different things for, oh, hang on, let me just get this started. All right, I've got that um, set to low. I'm gonna clean up, but I wanted to mention, cause I don't know what I'm gonna be able to show you later. Cause like I said, we're gonna have company. Um, so I will try to show you the finished taco soup, but we are going to top ours with um, some shredded lettuce, some sour cream, some shredded cheese. I also have some cilantro and avocado, so I'll probably pull that out. Um, if there wasn't so many tomatoes, you could also do some like diced tomatoes on the side as well or on top as well, but just kind of whatever that's, whatever sounds good to you. Oh, and we'll have some tortilla chips. So I'll try to at least pan the, the shot of everything if I can do that. Um, I just don't film often when we have company. So that is it for dinner. Um, again, I'll have the recipe linked down below for you. All right, guys. Well, I never did film anything else for the taco soup recipe, but it was really good. And we put all the things on it that I had mentioned. So I definitely recommend it. I will have all recipes that I do have linked down in the description box below for you to check out. If you like this kind of videos, this kind of videos, if you like these kind of videos, please give it a thumbs up. That lets me know that you enjoy it. It lets YouTube know that you enjoy it, which makes them more likely to share my videos with others. Also, if you're new, please consider subscribing before you leave so you don't miss out on my future videos. And I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.